I am Seema and welcome to part 12 of the chapter Electrochemistry. Let us now understand how do we calculate or measure the conductivity of ionic solutions. To do this, we must first understand what is cell constant. So before I come to actually measurement of the conductivity of ionic solutions, let us understand what cell constant or G star is or G asterisk is. Do you know when we carry out the measurement of an unknown resistance, we do it on a Wheatstone bridge. You must be aware of this as you do it in your physics practicals. So an accurate measurement of an unknown resistance is done on a Wheatstone, Wheatstone bridge. And in that you take that uh, particle or that wire and you can connect it because it's a metallic wire. You can connect it on the two ends. But the problem with an ionic solution is a solution is a liquid and therefore how do you measure the conductance of a liquid? And the second thing is that metallic conduction if you remember is electronic conduction. In that case if one electron is entering one electron is leaving the other end of the wire there is no chemical change that is occurring in the metallic wire. Therefore there is no chemical reaction that takes place. But in the case of an ionic solution, when you pass electric current through an ionic solution, oxidation and reduction start taking place and a chemical reaction may be facilitated. As a result, the chemical composition of the solution itself would change. So in the case of the Wheatstone bridge, when we calculate the resistance of an unknown uh, resistance of a metallic wire, we pass direct current. And therefore, we have these two problems that we face when we are dealing with solutions. The first, that we are passing DC, that is direct current, which will cause a, a chemical reaction and the composition of the solution would change. And if the composition changes, how would you talk about molar conductivity? The second thing, the second problem is that the solution cannot be connected like a metallic wire. How will you connect it? How will you connect a liquid like a wire? So the solution for this was that both the problems were solved. The first one where we talked of DC, that is direct using direct current, which caused a permanent chemical reaction. If instead of using direct current, we use alternating current, then the reaction keeps fluctuating in the forward and the backward direction. And overall, there is no net reaction. So we used AC instead of DC in the case of an ionic solution. Now the second problem was that the solution cannot be conducted to connected to the bridge like a metallic wire. You cannot connect it like a metallic two ends of a metallic wire when you connect it. So what was the solution? How could we solve this? The solution for this was made by making a conductivity cell. A conductivity cell is like a glass uh, rod like the uh, cathode in the cathode ray experiment if you remember just like your tube light. So you have a glass apparatus which is like a tube and with the help of this conductivity cell whose length is known and whose area of cross section is known so you know the distance between the two electrodes becomes the length of the conductor and the area of cross section of the entire vessel because the liquid acquires the shape of the vessel therefore the area of cross section of the vessel and the distance between the two electrodes they act as the length and area of cross section in order to help us to calculate the resistance. So this kind of a cell was known as a conductivity cell and the conductivity cell was created in order to find out the resistance or the conductivity of solutions which have uh, which are ionic in nature that is which are liquids. What does the conductivity cell look like? you do not want the electrodes to participate in the chemical reaction because there our aim is that there should be no chemical reaction so if you have electrodes that themselves participate that that is they themselves lose electrons and enter the solution they would change the concentration of the solution so we do not want electrodes first of all which are reactive so what do we do we take inert electrodes and we know that platinum electrodes which have been coated with platinum black they are that is platinized platinum are act as inert electrodes and inert electrodes that is platinized platinum are used in a kind of a uh, the conductivity cell the cell is in this shape like a cylinder and the two ends the distance between the two electrodes acts as the length and the area of cross section of the entire conductivity cell 
uh, that becomes the area of the conductor. So what is the conductor? The conductor is the solution. The only difference is that the conductor is not a solid like a metal. It's a solution. Therefore, we somehow manage to make it act like a, uh, like a metallic wire. So once you have, you have encompassed it or you have uh, kind of uh, encapsulated it inside this uh, capsule-like conductivity cell, it, is, it starts acting on the whole, it starts acting like the metallic conductor because the two ends of the electrodes, the wires, they act as the wires that you would be using. In the case of uh, measurement of resistance of a uh, of a metallic wire now so the only difference is that now instead of the whole metallic wire in between you have the conductivity cell which has the ionic solution these are two samples of such conductivity cells which have been created and these are the simpler versions one is this and the other is this elongated the vertical one where you have again the two electrodes and the solution which has a uh, so in this case the length would be less and the area of cross section would be more that's the only difference otherwise the the purpose is the same just the shape whichever is convenient when you're using it uh, practically the one you use that so that is how a conductivity cell was created after having understood this let us understand what this what this cell constant is now these, if you have to now calculate or measure the resistance of the, uh, of the solution in the cell, what would you do? We know that resistance is equal to rho, that is uh, the resistivity or specific resistance, into length over area. And we also know that conductivity or specific conductance is the inverse of resistivity. So, one up, uh, rho is equal to 1 upon kappa or kappa is equal to 1 upon rho so rho would be equal to 1 upon kappa so resistance becomes equal to rho into length over area which we have studied in the previous video and resistance therefore is equal to 1 upon kappa length over area the reason why we have brought kappa here is in the formula here is that our idea was to calculate the conductivity of the ionic solution so instead of having the resistivity we are now substituting it with the conductivity term so that we calculate the conductivity now l over a that is length over area this value is known as the cell constant every cell has a specific length over area right every cell would have obviously whatever area and length it has once you built the cell it has a certain length between the two electrodes and it has a certain area of cross-section and this is known as the conductivity it is known as the cell constant and it is represented by g star or g asterisk so what would be the dimension or the units of g star or cell constant we know length upon area. What are the units of length? The units of length are those of length. That it may be centimeter, it may be meter, whatever. And area is centimeter square or meter square, so length square. So on the whole, the dimensions of G star would be equal to length square. Length upon length square would be equal to length. They would have the dimensions of length. So if you're measuring in terms of centimeters, the, the G star would be reported in centimeters. If you are measuring in terms of meters, G star would be in meters. But now there's a problem. If you have this apparatus and you're filling it with a solution, there is a problem with the cell constant. Do you see here? The liquid that has been filled is not completely filled to the brim. There might be some area which is left which is uh, the area of cross-section measurement is not easy. There might be an error in your measurement of area of cross-section because after all, if you really see here, the liquid that you filled somehow could not fill it properly to the top. And if the temperature is higher, the whole apparatus kind of expands. The distance between the two electrodes might increase as a result of that expansion. So although you are you're putting in one liter, at a higher temperature, the distance between the two has expanded, but the area of cross-section has increased because of the swelling up of the apparatus. So this 
method or L upon A calculation of L upon A is none. Neither is it easy and it is a little difficult to do and secondly it is unreliable. Not only is it difficult, even if you do try to measure it, it is a little unreliable. So we say that the measurement of length and area is a little unreliable and it is difficult also. So what is the solution that we carry out for this? If we want to know the cell constant, we instead of finding out the length and area that way, G star is determined if you know the resistance of a cell. G star is determined by measuring the resistance of a cell having a solution and that a solution whose conductance that is kappa is known to us and it is known to us accurately. We first take the cell and we put a solution whose conductance is accurately known to us. It is usually KCl potassium chloride and we put this solution whose conductance is well known to us we put it inside the conductivity cell and then we calculate its resistance and then we measure its resistance when we do that we get to know what exactly is the error and that is how indirectly we can calculate the resistance of the of the cell so or rather the cell constant for the cell so how do we do it if g star is determined by measuring the resistance of a cell containing Therefore, G star is determined by measuring resistance of a cell containing a solution whose conductance kappa is already known to us. For example, we generally use KCA. Now, we already know that length upon area is equal to G star. I'm just bringing this down. Length upon area is G star. We know resistance is equal to 1 upon kappa length upon area. Right? Resistance is equal to 1 upon kappa length upon area. And length upon area is G star. So we can say R into kappa is equal to length upon area which is equal to G star. In other words, G star becomes equal to resistance into conductivity. So if you have, how would you calculate the conductance? You will find out the resistance using the uh, cell, the conductivity cell of a solution whose conductivity is already known. And if you know the conductivity already, you can calculate the resistance that will give you G star. That is the cell constant can be calculated from that. So this was how you calculate or how you measure what is cell constant and how you measure it. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.